In our last video, we were building out this WordPress website with WooCommerce and e-commerce in there, and we were customizing some of the checkout page, but today we're going to further customize it. We're going to reduce the number of fields in there, and we're going to add some extra stuff like the delivery date, as well as some product add-ons, such as adding extra days to the amount of days required. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump into WooCommerce and we're going to use this custom plugin called WooCommerce Checkout Add-ons, which is really cool. It allows us to add on extra stuff into our checkout area. So what I'm going to do is I've already downloaded this and I'm going to paste it straight into our project and we're going to test out how this works. So let's log into the backend and we'll add it in as a plugin. Now I've just got it over here, so I'm just going to possibly drag and drop it. So let's do that. We'll head here into plugins and we'll click here to add a new one and we'll just browse in and add that one. I'm going to hit upload plugin up the top here and I'm going to choose a file. I'm going to select to add this WooCommerce add-ons plugin and hopefully that just unpacks and we'll be able to start using that immediately. Now, if we jump in, we should see that we can activate it now. And I'm going to have a look at how we can customize this one to essentially achieve this result where we're adding these extra days as options. So what we're going to do is we are in here and we've got a configure option. So I'm going to select that one and let's see what we can do. So we're going to add a new add on. And this add on wants to be called. Let's see how many days do you need it to be delivered or how many days do you need it? So I'm going to add it in here as an option with a question mark. And I think I'll do this as a select. And I can see here we've got some values that we can do here on the left, but I think that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new value option over here. And what this is going to do is it's going to increase $25 to the price. And this will be just the seven day standard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this in here like this. And I'm going to do a tick box. Now for the very first variation, we don't want it to have a price. I'm going to hit that to zero and set that as default. We're going to add another one. And in this case, I'm going to do 14 days. And for this one here, I want to do this $25. So I'm going to remove the standard and I'll just put in $25 there. Let's do another one here for 21 days. And we'll do this at $50. And I think that's enough to get us started. And in terms of the display, I think that can all stay more or less the same. So I'm going to save that and let's see if that takes effect. We're going to check out a product and essentially we want to be able to see that this essentially is in the checkout section. So I'm going to select here for a skip bin. We're just going to select a standard one here for 225 and click to order. Here's our cart page and we'll proceed to the checkout page. And when we get here, let's have a look. So I do have an option here and we do have that seven days. Now, if we select 14 days, we can see that the price has increased by $25. So that's really cool. We can see it's being applied there. The only other thing I suppose we need to do is position this up a little bit in our area here. And I guess now all we have to do is look at reducing the number of fields we have here because we don't need all of these. So what I want to be able to do here is I want to remove this first name and this last name. I want to combine them into one field that says your name. Now there's a few different ways to be able to do this, but I did some quick Googling and one of the very first results was this one over here. And this is a quick bit of functionality that we can jump into our functions page and paste in. And let's take a look at what's actually happening in here. So we're adding a new WooCommerce field and we're removing a previous one. We're removing the section here for the billing last name and we're returning the fields. But then we're also adding, adding another filter in here. And this other filter in here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing the placeholder here for the first name. So I'm going to change this to full name or even your name. So let's pass in your name. And we're going to set the label here as your name as well. Or maybe we'll just have the placeholder as full name and the label as your name. We're going to hit save on that. We're going to refresh our checkout here and see how this updates. 
And when we update it, we can see that it's getting gotten rid of uh, the last name there. And we've got your full name in here. The only issue here is that the styling doesn't fit quite well. And this is because we have some styling here for the first row, which essentially doesn't work exactly the way we want it to. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this ID over here and we're going to remove this float and width that we're applying. So let's jump here into our CSS. And what I want to be able to do is pass in this ID here. And we'll do the width to 100% and we'll also take out the float. So we'll do float to none. And I think that should be it. We'll just save that and give it a refresh. And hopefully that just updates and it looks like it has. So that's pretty cool. Now, the next part here is to the email address. We don't actually grab the company or the country or anything like that. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to remove these ones. Now to remove a company, I've done another quick Google here and all we really need to do is add in another function here. So we're going to jump here into our functions and we're going to add this one here. And what this is doing is removing the company name from the billing fields here and returning them. So we're going to hit save on that. We're going to jump back in here and we're going to refresh and hopefully that gets rid of that. So that's looking good already. Now this section here for Australia looks like it's preset, but ideally every single one of these deliveries will be in Australia. So we probably don't need this in here either. What I'm thinking is presetting it to Australia and hiding this one as well. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So I've done some quick Googling on this as well. And if we take a look, there are some different types of codes we can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually copy over this one. We're going to also put this into our functions here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set AU for the default country, and we're going to set WA here for the state. And I'm going to hit save on that. And we're going to refresh our check in here and let's see if that applies. I'm going to jump here into our skip bins and we'll go to select one once more. And in here we'll select to check that out. So let's proceed to check out here and let's have a look at our billing address. And it does look like it's set to Australia, but uh, and our state here is WA. If we are setting these though, do we really need them to be presented? We probably could just hide them. Now, in order to hide them, since we do need them as part of the billing, the easiest way is to maybe just hide the actual CSS for that. So I think that's what I might do in this case. Let's have a look at this class here. This class here is for the single country, but it also has an ID here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump in here and we're going to pass that ID in here just like that. Do a display of none. I'm going to save that and hopefully that'll make the country there disappear. The other one here is the state. And again, this is preset. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to jump here and find that ID. Now this is for this section over here and this ID is billing state field. So we're going to also pass this in and make this disappear. So those will be preset automatically. Now let's see what else we have here. We have the phone number the address as a full street. And instead of what we're doing here, here we have a street, apartment, suburb, and postcode. So I suppose we want to reduce those. So let's take a look at how we can combine all of these into one single field. To get rid of the street or unit here, I think that should be pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're just going to find the ID over here and we're just going to remove address field number two from our styling. And we'll apply the similar one that we've done for our countries there. Let's save that and give that a test. So I'm going to just refresh it over here. So I think maybe that hasn't taken effect. Let me double check here. So over here, it looks like it's being overwritten. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an important tag over here and that should bring it back to being display none. So let's refresh that once more and it looks like that one is gone. So we're down just to the street suburb and postcode. Now, a lot of the times we are putting in a quoted suburb in here and I'd love to see if we could pass that in, but 
Since we're starting out with something simple, we might just keep it basic. And what I'm thinking is maybe we'll just leave it with street, suburb, postcode, and phone. Now we are, we also have email address here, which is great. And the only other thing we need to do is we need to move this how many del days for delivery up a little bit. Now, I think we have our form section over here. And I guess we have to have a look at where that's coming in because we've got this section here for the final steps. And maybe maybe it's over here. Let's cut this out and save that and see if that's where it's being applied. Actually, I think it's somewhere towards the end. So maybe it's this part here, check out after registration form. So I'm going to cut that out and refresh and see if that's the aspect or the function. Nope. So it's apparently not this one. Let's cut out these two over here. This is sort of how I usually like to find out where things are. If I cut them out and they still work, then usually that means that that's not the thing that we're looking for. So let's cut out these ones over here and refresh. And in this case, we got out most of the content over here. But again, that's not what we're after. We might cut out this whole section here, because if it's not that it must be placed somewhere after this section. So it looks like it is. Um, what I'm thinking is that if it's not in here, let's have a look at this overriding div here and have a look at what's happening. So this is our customer info. And this is our WC check on check out add on. So we're gonna to have to find out where that is in our code. Because right now I can't see where it is in here. And I can't see where it is in here. And sometimes it's hiding somewhere. So let's have a look. So I've done a little bit of googling. And from what I can see, we can move the checkout location by passing this custom function in here. And this lets us order it essentially wherever we want here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass over this function here into our functions.php file, we're going to jump back here into our website, and hopefully we can move this just up here. So I'm going to hit refresh. And it looks like that item has been moved up there. So that's really cool. And now we can set these to be whichever day we want. So that's looking pretty good. The only other thing now we need to do is add two more custom fields in here, we want one for the date to deliver and one for the date to pick up. So let's take a look at how we can create that. Now for the next part of this tutorial, we want to do this delivery date and I think we're going to have to use this WooCommerce checkout field editor so that we can put in custom fields in here. So what I've done is I've bought it and I've downloaded it here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in here and we're going to add it as a new plugin in our plugin section, we're going to customize it to add those different things in. So I've just selected it here. And I'm going to hit install now. And hopefully we can test this one out because I think it should work for us. So here it's just installing, let's give that a second and we'll activate it. And what we'll do is we'll jump into the settings for this section. And uh, I think it should be under the WooCommerce section here. Let's take a look. So I've got check out add ons and this time we're using checkout fields. So let's actually browse in here and take a look. And from what I can see, we already have a number of fields. And what we want to do is we want to add a new one. So I'm going to select to add a new one. And we're going to give this a name. And this will be the delivery underscore date. So we'll pass that in and we'll give it a proper label here delivery date. And this one, it can essentially exist on the left side here. And what we want to be able to do is we want to have uh, let's have a look this as a required field. And we also want this to be a date picker. So I'll select that here. So that's good. The next thing we want to do is add another one in here. And in this case, we want a return pickup date. So let's actually copy over that text. And I'm just going to browse back in here to our website. And we'll paste that in here just like that. Now for this one over here, what I'm thinking is, um, we're going to just pass it in as return underscore pick up. And again, this one will be a date picker, it'll be on the right side here, also required. 
And I think that should be it. Let's save the changes for that. And let's take a look at what we actually get. So I'm going to refresh our cart over here. And when we do, we can see that we have our delivery date and we've got our pickup date. So it looks like that's come across. And here is also our standard number of days that we need it. So it looks like all of that is nearly done here. Now, I'm not too sure what else we need to do, but for the time being, I think that should get us across the line and we can save this section and we can take a look at the next part. And the next part here will be to uh, let's jump into our design. Uh, it'll be to map out this extra page here. And in this page, we have a slightly larger skip bin. And what we want to do is instead of doing a product checkout, we're actually just going to set this one with a contact form. So it'll be a little bit easier to utilize. So let's, uh, let's have a look at this one in the next video. But at least this gives you an idea of what it's like to customize the cart in WooCommerce when we're doing this kind of stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.